everybody, Aaron here from the Cool Guys Nation, and welcome to part two of Printing an Army of Daleks. We're doing Necron conversions for the Daleks, and we're going to make ourselves a nice army. What we need to do is, first of all, finalize our list. Fantastic. And this is what we have in front of us. Now, once again, I'm not making this list to be a hyper-competitive... 40k list. Um, I am using a decurion attachment, but I'm not putting in all of the different crazy things that can go in there. I'm not super familiar with Necrons. I've never actually played them. I've watched videos of them being played, and I've played against them a few times, so I'm kind of cobbling my way through this. But the way that I'm building this list is um, for modeling, meaning which items do I think would work best with building Necrons. So what I've picked is a Decurion attachment with a Royal Court. We have an Overlord, a Lord, and a Crypt Tech. Um, I know this says 1850, but I'm actually looking at about 2,000 points. Um, I have a Reclamation Legion with an Overlord, 10 Lich Guard, five Immortals, 14 Warriors, and a Night Scythe. And the reason why I'm choosing the Night Scythe is because I think it'd be really cool to do a Nalek, Nalek, a Dalek spaceship um, build, which might not actually be 3D printed. I might build that from scratch. I don't know. I haven't really figured that out. Um, I have found some 3D files that would work for that. By the way, a Dalek spaceship looks like a flying saucer, so you, you can approximate it pretty good. Another unit of 14 warriors going into Night Scythe. The reason why I chose 14 is the Night Scythe has a capacity of 15, and this way I could embed an Overlord or a Lord or a Crypt Tech with them. Uh, next up, we have three Tomb Blades, which is the minimum amount that we have to take. Now, I know Tomb Blades are really, really good. So, I could see going, dropping down to five Lich Guard um, and adding Tomb Blades. But right now, I only have uh, one box of Tomb Blades. So, I'm kind of going with three, and I'm still not even sure how I'm going to do that conversion. Um, and then I have a Destroyer Cult, which is a Destroyer Lord and nine destroyers, and I think that's gonna be really awesome because I'm gonna put the top half of the Dalek onto the body of the destroyer, and I think that's gonna be really cool. So that's kind of our list, and what we have to do is we have to, first of all, find some files to print. So I'm gonna to go to Thingiverse, and we're gonna look up some Daleks, and you can see that it already comes up in my feed, um, and we're just gonna open these up, and we're gonna take a look at the different prints that are available, and then we're gonna talk about um, what we can do, ooh, is that a Dalek Pez dispenser? Cool. Um, so let's also search Dalek. And you can see there's a Dalek Buddha. That's really funny. There is a whole bunch of stuff to pick from, like a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I don't know if I opened this one. All right, so let's take a look at these. Um, this is kind of cool. So the first thing that we notice is that this one is broken apart into different pieces. And that's that's good. Now, the truth is that these pieces are going to be really small because most 3D prints are kind of large and we need to scale these down to the size of a 35 millimeter base. So this one doesn't have the bumps already on here and that's kind of weird. Like it has bumps in the picture. So is there like, do they expect you to print the bumps separately? You know what? I, I, I bet some of these might be those bumps. So this one, uh, I don't think we're going to use. We're going to bypass that. This model is absolutely incredible. I actually spoke to uh, Renegade. Um, this one's really nice. The, the 3D print is fantastic. It's hollow. Um, it's in different pieces. And it's, it's very well designed. So I think we're going to download this file, um, which all you have to do is click download. And it will automatically download for free. So we're going to use that one. This one is also really nice. Again, it's in pieces, um, but I think it's in too many pieces. And like, like this is gonna be really thin and really small. And, you know, I don't know. It's definitely a fantastic print. If you're going to be doing a larger Dalek, this one's probably really good, but I think we're gonna skip this one for now. This thing is awesome, and most importantly, it's awesome because it has a 3D model of the creature that is inside of the, um, the, the Dalek suit of armor. And if we go to Games Workshop really quickly, uh, I have a really cool idea for this. And 
uh, tomb blades. Fantastic. So what I'm thinking is that I can use because part of the, here's here, here's the thing with 40k. Um, I think WYSIWYG is important. You want people to know what guns you have, okay? And, and you want them to be able to look at it and know, and you want to be able to remember it for yourself. So what I'm thinking is I can use this shell, and then I can just print this guy, and maybe using some uh, green stuff, like extend the tentacles and whatnot, and embed him inside of here. I don't know. I think that's pretty cool. We're not going to be focusing on that part of the build. When we go ahead and start doing that and testing it, we'll talk about it. That's just my idea for right now. So I'm also going to download this file. Next is a Dalek mug cup. And uh, I think I'm just going to skip this one. You know, it's got this whole thing here that you can hold it. This is a, a big, like, drinking cup. And I just don't, I don't think that's what we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and skip it. Um, a Dalek Pez Dispenser. This is actually kind of interesting, although the resolution on it is pretty low. So <clears throat> I think we're going to skip this one as well. This one, however, I like this one a lot. Um, these pieces here, we're not really going to worry about because uh, I'm going to be replacing those with Necron bits. And this one looks pretty good. So I'm actually, I'm kind of excited for this one. I think it's going to be a good print. All right. What are we going to do for our lords and our cryptex and everything? I want to make a Davros. And I'm going to do that by printing the bottom half of a Dalek and then kit bashing a Necron with like face on it and some arms and doing things. And we're going to use these for our lords and our cryptex. And I think that's going to be fantastic. That is going to be in episode three. So let's continue with working on the Dalek. Necron Warrior. I am using a Form Labs 2 resin printer, and resin printers work a little bit different than extruding printers. Um, for one, they have a clear tank of resin. Well, it doesn't have to be clear, but the material that we're using is clear. They have a tank of resin that lasers shoot through, um, and it gives you a much finer detail of a print than the traditional extruder, but it also has some other issues. And those issues are that it's more expensive, um, you can waste a lot of resin if you don't do your infill properly because it will print something solid. And then it also has an external structure that can leave little deformations on the print. And so right now we need to do two major things. One, we need to make sure that our Daleks are scaled properly so that they will fit on a 35 millimeter base. And two, we need to run some print tests in order to make sure that the layout of our structure um, is going to give us the highest resolution possible without making mistakes. So the first thing we're going to do is I downloaded um, some 32 millimeter bases. All right. So we know that Necron Warriors go on 32 millimeter bases. Now we know how big a 32 millimeter base is going to look on our print bed. Next thing is that we're going to take our file, which we're going to be trying two different um, files. We are going to uh, do this split. Okay, and you can see, oh my gosh, this thing is huge. It's way, way bigger than these bases. So we're going to have to scale that down. So we're going to go here, we're going to click this one, we're going to go over here, um, and we're going to try bringing it all the way down to point two, and then we're just going to orient it over one of these bases, and truthfully, still a little bit big. So let's go to point 0.180 and we'll sort of move it around. I still think it's too big. Let's drop it to point 0.15. That's looking pretty good, but I'm actually going to bring it back up to point 0.16. Perfect. Okay, so we have this. We know it's the right scale. Let's also try a second print. So I'm going to use another one that's just called Dalek. We're going to import it. This one is also big. Um, and I know that this one needs to go down to 0.208. Okay. So we know these are now the right size. So we can take our bases and we can delete them out. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate both of these um, three times. All right, so now let's 
Let's kind of lay these out. So the reason why we're going to do multiple prints is because we want to test different orientations of printing it and different structures. Okay, um, let's go ahead and spin this one like this, and we'll spin this one too. All right, so we have our two different uh, Dalek models, and we have a couple copies of each one laid out on our print bed. And what we need to do is we need to test some orientations. Now, I don't want to use the auto orient feature because that's going to do them all at the same time. and It's going to do them probably pretty similar. Um, so what I want to do is, first of all, I want to define what I'm going to be doing. The density we're going to do at one and our point size, we're going to try to do it as small as possible. So we see if we get down too low, it gives us this error. We don't want to do that. So let's do... Um, Let's try 0.5. And uh, the other thing with this printer is that the resin has to be able to um, drip out. And if it's printing in this orientation, then it's not going to be able to drip out. Okay, because this is going to be printing upside down. So it's going to be printing like this. This is going to act as a cup. We can see if there's a hole in it. Oh, look, these have a problem. These ones are not hollow, which means they're gonna print solid and we're gonna waste a whole bunch of resin. So you know what? Those are going away. I'm not even gonna use them. So that just leaves us with this one. Let's get back to the top view, there we go. Um, I'm gonna move these around a little bit differently. All right, so the other one, unfortunately, we have to get rid of. Um, I'm gonna have to go back into that 3D file and hollow it out. And it's kind of a pain in the butt. So the first thing we want to do is we want to pick our supports. Now, I would want my point size to be as small as possible because that's going to leave the least amount of impact on the outside of the model. And you'll see more what I'm talking about, but it tells me not to do that. So we're going to leave this at 0.5. And we're going to put our density at 1.0. Next, we're going to try different orientations. We're going to try one on its head we're gonna try one um, kind of at an angle, and we're gonna try the other one on its side. And we're gonna see if any of this generates a better structure. So let's go ahead and generate selected, okay? Um, generate selected, and generate selected. So what this is doing is this is building a armature that has to go around your print in order for it to print properly. And as you can see, it connects in all these different points. This is the armature. It's going to print this. All of this stuff is going to have to be cut off in the end, and it might leave little tiny imperfections that we're going to have to deal with. And what I'm really worried about is this section here. It's very fine, um, and anytime something is touching it, like right here, or I'm sorry, right here, that might not look so great. But this is gonna give us a nice test. We're gonna be able to test our orientation and we're gonna be able to pick which print we think looks best for when we print the rest of our Daleks. And as you saw, we're gonna need about 60 of them. So we're gonna be printing a lot. So this is now ready to go. Um, let's calculate our print time. We have a print time of two hours and 36 minutes. That's not so bad. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and send this to the printer. Our print is complete. Let's go ahead and take it out. So we can see our structure on the side. Um, we have our three different orientations, one slightly tilted, one horizontal, and one upside down vertical. I need to take these off and put them into the isopropyl alcohol for about 20 minutes. And then I need to UV cure them. And so we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then we will see which print is best. The parts have soaked in isopropyl alcohol, and now we are putting them into our UV curing oven. Yeah, we might be able to get a look in there. <clears throat> We're going to need to leave them in there for a couple hours, actually. Our models are now cured, 
and we can take a look and figure out which position we like best. So starting with the one on the side, it looks really good. Um, really great resolution on the neck, but unfortunately there are a few points where it is touching on the neck. So I, I, I'm, not, I'm not thinking that one's really good. Let's go with the upside down one. Also the upside down one printed really well, but our structure is just too much around and I'm not too happy with it. So I think the winner is going to be this one at an angle. And the reason why is that we don't have any head distortion. Um, and there's only one point that's touching this fine detail, which is great. Also the uh, structure around it is not like completely encasing it like this one. So I think this is the position that we're going to be running it in. And what we need to do now is we need to go back to the computer and we need to set this to the highest level quality um, and we need to print it one more time and make sure that this is exactly the position that we want to do it in. So let's go ahead and jump back to the computer. So while that's printing, let's go ahead and take the um, outside structure off of this one and we'll take a little bit closer look at the print. I'm going to use our flat back pliers um, and we have to be really careful on some parts because we don't want to crack it off. Actually this, the uh, plunger, plunger we're just going to cut off because that's where we're going to put the Necron gun. So we just need to gently remove all of this. Okay, I got the little nozzle glued back on, and what we really want to pay attention to is that these ribs here are very clean, very precise. Um, it's looking really good. Uh, there are some dots on some of these bumps that I'm probably going to have to go back and file down, like on, on this one a little bit, but overall, the print is looking really nice, and just for scale, Let's grab a Space Marine so we can see that um, it's going to work really well for 32 millimeter bases. It's actually not technically a Dalek scale because Daleks are shorter than humans and Space Marines are taller, even though that's a scout, but whatever. So I think it's going to look really good. Um, I'm very happy with this. And let's jump over and see how um, our high resolution print turned out.